Hi, let's go through the most quintessentially computer science topic, which is binary, and talk about the binary units. So binary itself is a numbering system. Humans use a numbering system called deanery, which uses 10 digits. Binary only uses two digits, which happen to be chosen to be zero and one. Something which is really hard to comprehend initially is the fact that all data used by a computer must be stored in binary. A computer is designed to only be able to work with things which are stored in binary which means everything we want to use in a computer has to get represented in binary. Some things like numbers are simple to represent because it converts easily between deanery and binary. Other things like images, sound, text, you have to invent other ways to represent it in binary. We'll look at some of these ways in future videos. Now, binary was chosen by the early computer designers to be used and has stuck, but actually they didn't need to choose binary. They could have used deanery or hexadecimal or any other system. They chose binary because it is the simplest numbering system we have. We cannot have a system of only one digit. Two is our minimum. And because it only has two states, one and zero, we can easily represent it with power being on or off. So really a computer is made up of billions of switches. And these are often called transistors. We've got only two states, on and off. And we cannot get any more simple than this. The fact that it's so simple means we can shrink it down to a tiny size. We could have a switch with five settings or 10 settings or 16 settings if we wanted to use deanery or hexadecimal. However, that's going to be harder to make, more prone to errors, and a lot harder to shrink down into the minute sizes needed to fit inside a CPU or other components like that. Now, binary units are used to represent the size of binary data, which can get obviously quite vast given it's needed for all things in a computer. The lowest unit we have in binary is a bit. A bit as the lowercase b as its unit, and this represents either just one, zero, or one, and it's short for binary digit. So either a zero or a one is a bit. The next smallest unit is a nibble, bit of a stupid word, but there we go. A nibble is four bits, and a nibble hasn't got a shorthand unit, so you won't see one, but something like this would be a nibble. A byte is a bit, or also you could say it's two nibbles. It has the uppercase b as its shorthand unit, so pay attention to the fact that bit is lowercase, byte is uppercase. This is eight bits, often we write bytes grouped as two nibbles with a space in between. So these are our three smallest units in binary. We have to get really, really familiar with these terms. We also have bigger units in binary because the data gets really, really big. The next one up after a byte is a kilobyte, AB, if we're in uppercase letters. A kilobyte is a thousand bytes. And the next units are always a thousand times the previous unit. So the next one up is a megabyte. A megabyte is a thousand kilobytes. After that, a gigabyte is a thousand megabytes. A terabyte is a thousand gigabytes. And a petabyte is a thousand terabytes. So you've got to learn this sequence, but the relationship between them is always a thousand times the previous one. You may have been taught, you may sometimes see it being a thousand and twenty-four times the previous one. That's also acceptable. But in an exam, I would always use a thousand because it's a lot easier, especially given you haven't got a calculator in paper one. So you've got to learn the sequence, use flashcards, test yourself, test your friends to make sure you just memorize this all the time. To help you out a little bit, a megabyte is a million bytes because the kilobyte is 1000 bytes and a megabyte is a thousand kilobytes. This means to get a megabyte in terms of bytes, you do a thousand squared and a thousand squared is a million. So M mega million that might be helpful. Gigabyte doesn't really connect that well, but the next one up is a billion. So a gigabyte is a billion bytes because a thousand cubed is a billion. And a terabyte is a thousand gigabytes, which is a thousand um, to power four, which is a trillion. So again, T for tera, T for trillion may help you memorize the order there. And to give you a bit of context to these sizes, a text file is often kilobytes. Image files, especially high quality ones, are often in the low megabytes. Movies are often in the low gigabytes and things like video games nowadays can be up to hundreds of gigabytes if it's a very, very big high quality video game. The secondary storage you have on your computer itself is often a terabyte, if not more nowadays. Petabytes we can't really relate to as an individual person yet. Maybe one day we will in our, in our later lives. But at the moment, if you're running a data center for cloud storage or cloud processing, you may well have petabytes of data with just thousands and thousands of SSDs or hard drives. Now you will get exam questions where you have to convert between the units. So let's look at three possible examples here. So question one, how many bits are there in 2.2 kilobytes? 
Well, the first thing to be clear about is how we go from well, like what sequence is between bits and kilobytes here. Well, what is between the two here? Well, we've got nibbles, but I don't really care about nibbles in all honesty. Bytes, I'm going to need to go via to get to bits. So we're wanting to go from kilobytes into bits here. So we're going from kilobytes to bytes initially, then we're going from bytes into bits. So try not to skip a step. Make sure you write out each of the units in between, apart from nibbles potentially, to make sure you don't miss any steps here. So to go from a kilobyte to a byte, what do I have to do? Well, a kilobyte is a thousand bytes. So therefore I'm going to be timesing by thousand. People are usually pretty good at memorizing, oh, it's a thousand times bigger. They're less confident on whether they divide or multiply. But if you're going from a big unit to a small unit, you need to multiply. And I'd always think of a, a kind of non-binary example. If you were to do something like, oh, I'm going to run two kilometers today. Well, two kilometers is 2000 meters. So it's exactly the same relationship here between kilobytes and bytes. It's going from a big unit to a smaller unit. A smaller unit gets bigger when I use it. Therefore, I'm going to multiply, not divide here. So um, we're going to do the same going from bytes to bits, except we're multiplying by eight because that 1,000 relationship doesn't match up when we go from bytes to bits. We're doing 2.2 times 1,000, which is going to be equal to 2,200. And then we're doing 2,200 times eight, which, I mean, we could do potentially in our head, but I wouldn't be confident in an exam. So 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17. The answer should be 17,600 if the unit is lowercase b. Don't forget to do workings out. Don't forget to write down the unit because you may get marks for those. Now, how many megabytes are in 24,000 bits? Again, let's think about how we're, what we're doing in this process. Well, to go from bits to megabytes, it's a bit more work. I've got bytes, then I've got kilobytes, and that's how I get between. And this time around, we are wanting to get to megabytes. So therefore, if I want to do these arrows, I'm going the other way around here because I'm going from a small unit to a big unit. Because of this, I'm going to be dividing, not multiplying. So from bits to bytes, I'm going to divide by eight. From bytes to kilobytes, divide by a thousand. And to go from kilobytes to megabytes again, I'm going to divide by a thousand. So let's do it step by step. 24,000 divided by eight is equivalent to 3,000. 3,000 divided by 1,000 is equivalent to three. And then three divided by 1,000 again is equivalent to 0 0.003. And that is my final answer. 0 0.003 megabytes is equivalent to 24,000 bits. And the last one is framed in a context which can throw people sometimes, but it's the same question, just with some more words added to it. So assuming an audiobook file is four megabytes, how many audiobooks could be stored in a hard drive with a capacity of two terabytes? It's really saying how many times can four megabytes fit into two terabytes? Well, what do you have to do to answer this question? Well, you need to get them into the same unit. So right now I've got two different units. I can't divide one unit by another unit. I need to make sure they're either both in terabytes or both in megabytes. Now, I don't really have a preference on which way I go. Let's just convert terabytes to megabytes. I think it's maybe a little bit easier. So to go from megabytes to terabytes, what do I do? Well, the middle unit between these two is a gigabyte. And I'm going from a big unit to a small unit. Therefore, I'm going to be multiplying. So first of all, multiplying by a thousand. Then I'm going to be multiplying by another thousand. So really, I'm multiplying by a million. A thousand times a thousand is a million. So that means two terabytes is equal to 2 million megabytes. It's quite a scary number to have to do maths with, but um, they've usually questions choose relatively nice numbers. So to work out how many audiobooks could fit into this hard drive, a bit of a silly question because it would never be this simple, but they're pretending like it is. We need to divide 2 million by four. Well, how many times does four go into 2 million? That seems quite hard. Then how many times would four go into say 20? Well, it goes in five times. Here it's 2 million, not 20. So therefore it goes in 500,000 times. So this imaginary hard drive could fit in 500,000 audiobooks.